risk. That's according to a new report. The Nursery and Midwifery Council says the standard of care in accident and emergency needs to be monitored and a shortage of midwives must be addressed. Gareth George reports now on yet more criticism for a beleaguered hospital. It's now three months since the Independent Care Quality Commission uncovered what it described as serious failings at Basildon Hospital. Now, an independent management team is being sent into a hospital trust in Essex after concerns were raised about the standard of care. Amidst the media storm, the Nursing and Midwifery Council decided it needed to investigate too. The council tries to keep patients safe by making sure all nurses and midwives are properly qualified and competent. And here is its report, and basically these 50 pages can be boiled down to one sentence. The trust here needs stronger leadership. And it made interesting reading for Phil Sherry. He believes managers at Basildon Hospital aren't accountable for what happens there. Two years ago, his brother Richard died after falling on a ward while recovering from a major operation. All the managers along the line, if that leadership was stronger, we'd have a very, really good hospital. And wouldn't, my brother would be alive and so would a lot of other people. I'm absolutely convinced of it. And it probably applies to the whole of the NHS from what I've read. Because, as you say, perhaps at the moment, rather than being proud of their local hospital, people in Basildon are frightened absolutely. of it. Absolutely. That, that's dead right. They are. Everybody I speak to. A statement from the Health Trust about today's report said it was acknowledged at the end of November that it would take at least six months to address all of the regulatory concerns. We're only halfway through that period but are making demonstrable progress. A case that's underlined concerns about the hospital is still going through the courts. 20-year-old Kyle Flack, who was severely disabled, died after getting his head stuck in a hospital bed. The Trust has admitted breaking health and safety regulations. It's a waiting sentence. Gareth George, BBC Look East. A fire which broke out at an electronics factory near Southend is thought to have been started deliberately. Forty firefighters tackled the blaze at Pritwell near the railway line from Southend to Liverpool Street last night. Work began today on London Gateway, the new deep sea port in Essex. The company behind the project says it will bring 35,000 jobs to the area. But environmentalists fear that the dredging needed could destroy marine life in the Thames. This report is from Tom Edwards. The Thames estuary is used by ships carrying goods from all over the world. Much of it ends up in shops in London. But the largest vessels can't use it. We're here. Yes. And this we were taken out to see the solution. This dredger is starting to clear a huge channel, miles long, underwater. London was the biggest and most successful port in the world uh, until uh, a few years ago. And um, because of the restrictions of the river, it hasn't been possible to get the world's biggest ships right into the heart of our biggest point of consumption here in the UK. So the dredging creates that, that marine infrastructure. Eventually, the country's largest dock will also be built. No money from the government, but today, support. We'll effectively take off the roads each day 2,000 HGVs. And that really means that per year, there are some 148,000 tonnes of carbon emissions that will not take place. This site is going to be huge, and the ships that will eventually use it will be six or seven times larger than the ones that use the estuary at the moment. This will be the first deep water port in Europe for 25 years. It'll cost £1.5 billion, creating thousands of new jobs. This is SeaWorld along the coast at South End. It's economy over ecology. Experts uh, here have real concerns talk. about the dredging. Well, the estuary itself is a very important breeding ground for not, not just the Dover sole, but a whole host of different uh, marine fish. There's massive cockle beds just down the river from us um, and the potential for the, for the sediment to wash down the river and if not suffocate the beds entirely, then the contents, the heavy metals, could potentially accumulate in the cockles and poison them. The company wants this dock to be the trading centre of the UK and it says it's monitoring the dredging carefully. Certainly after the dock opens in 10 years' time, these waters won't look the same again. A charity in Norfolk is looking for someone to help them maintain a historic fishing boat. 
The Lydia Eva is the world's last steam drifter fishing vessel, but a steam engineer needs to be found before the weekend. The Lydia Eva Trust is putting the Great Yarmouth ship back to steam working order. A church in Cambridgeshire, which was destroyed by an arson attack, will take at least two years to rebuild. The cost of repairs at St Mary's Church at Westry could be about a million pounds. Mario Mizendau reports. This was St Mary's Church before the fire. Today, demolition experts have been clearing the roof which has been destroyed. Thankfully, the outer walls, the bell tower and the steeple can be salvaged. Loss adjusters and structural engineers have spent the day assessing the damage and decided the church can be rebuilt. Certainly the masonry and uh, the building should be salvageable and should be able to remain in place, but the roof and everything else is absolutely destroyed from end to end. The fire was so intense that most of the interior is nothing but a charred mass. St Mary's is a church with a very strong congregation. It's a community church used by many associations and many generations of the same family. I was a choir boy here until my early teens. My son was christened here, my mother's funeral was here, my wife's funeral would have been here if there had been a big enough church, but it was a compact, lovely church that everybody enjoyed coming to. They felt comfortable in it. It weren't overwhelmed by it. It, um, it. it was just a fantastic church. St Mary's is insured, but more money will be needed for the rebuild. Donations have already been offered, and a Facebook page on the internet has been the focus of much sadness as well as anger towards the arsonists. Services will continue in the nearby parish rooms, but the rector is hoping people will forgive. Try not to be angry. Yes, be sad, but we've got to look to the future. We can restore things, we can get back, and our weddings and funerals will take place in St Peter's. Burials can take place here. Life can carry on. It will be at least two and a half years before St Mary's Church is fully rebuilt. Marianne Missimdar, BBC Look East, Westry. You're watching Look East from the BBC. Coming up, where your money went from sport relief. A campaign's been set up to raise enough money to build a new hospice for children. It'll cost £3 million and could be open within a year and will support families across Suffolk and North Essex. We currently have three hospices for children there at Milton near Cambridge, Quidnham in Norfolk and in Ipswich. They cost £5 million a year to run, relying heavily on donations and fundraising. But the site in Ipswich is now too small, so local people are being asked to dig deep to help build a new one. It's just gone 8 o'clock and BBC Radio Suffolk is on the road and on air, live from the Children's Hospice. 